In this lab, you need to configure both static and dynamic NAT. So we've been told to configure both static and dynamic NAT to get this network working. I'm going to connect to the Cisco router and open up a console. The first thing I'll do is configure the router with a host name, and then I'll go to the internet facing interface and no shut the interface and configure the router with an IP address of 8.8.8.100 .8 .8 slash 24 mask. Go on to the inside interface and no shut it. Configure an IP address of 10.1.1.254 slash 24 mask. So show IP interface brief. The router has been configured with IP addresses. The next step is to configure static NAT for the HTTP and FTP server. The HTTP server has an IP address of 10.1.1.100. FTP server has an IP address of 10.1.1.101. So firstly, we need to configure the HTTP server using only the required port. So IP NAT inside source static. I need to specify the transport, which is TCP, IP address of 10.1.1.100, the physical IP address, and the port number, which is port 80. And then we need to specify the external or public facing IP address and port number, and then press enter. Now in a previous lab, I configured HTTPS as well as HTTP. Here I'll only configure HTTP because that's all we've been requested to do in the exam. Read carefully so that you configure the network per the exam instructions. So IP NAT inside source static. In this example, we want to configure the FTP server, but we've been told to use full static NAT. So I'm not going to configure a port number. I'm simply going to configure the entire range of port numbers on the FTP server. So show IP NAT translations. Those are the translations that we've configured. Show run interface gigabit 000. Packet trace unfortunately doesn't support that command. So show run. There's our inside interface. We still need to configure IP NAT inside on that interface. There's the outside interface. So interface gigabit 001, IP NAT outside. Interface gigabit 000, IP NAT inside. So we've configured the inside NAT interface, the outside NAT interface, and we've configured two static NAT translations. We then need to configure dynamic NAT. So IP NAT inside source list. In this example, I'll choose access list one to keep it simple. Interface that we're going to overload is gigabit 001. Don't forget to do overloading. We've got two PCs on the inside that need to be netted. Create the access list, so access list one, permit any in this example. So show IP NAT translations. We've got our two static NAT translations. We won't see the dynamic NAT translations until the PCs send traffic. So on inside PC1, can we open up a browser to cisco.com? Let's look at the NAT translations. There's been a DNS response. It took it a while, but notice there's cisco.com. Look at the NAT translations again. What you can see now is there are the DNS NAT translations. PC had to connect to the DNS server. 
and here is the connection to the HTTP server. So this host on the inside network has been translated to this IP address and it connected to this server on port 80. We can do some proof of that by using nslookup cisco.com. Notice that's the IP address of Cisco. We should be able to ping cisco.com as well. Notice that resolves. And if we look at our NAT translations, you can see the ICMP messages here. There are the DNS resolutions. Notice the protocol used is UDP. Here are the TCP connections to the web server. Let's check a connection to facebook.com. So facebook.com, we can connect to facebook.com, show IP NAT to translations. This is Facebook. So we can see the NAT connection to Facebook. We can also verify that by doing nslookup facebook.com and there's the IP address of Facebook. So that looks like it's working well, but to confirm, uh, let's do something similar on the second PC. This PC has an IP address of 10.11.103. At the moment in our NAT translations, we don't see 103 in the inside local address list. But if we open up a web browser to cisco.com, the PC can connect to cisco.com. And if we look at the NAT translations, notice there is a connection to cisco.com. There's the DNS translation. Facebook.com, we can connect to Facebook, show IP NAT translations. Here's the translation to Facebook. Once again, our DNS translation inside PC2 connection to Facebook and to Cisco. Here are the connections from PC1 to various servers on the internet. So these two internal hosts can connect to servers on the internet. Can this outside PC connect to our internal servers? I'll open up a web browser. We'll connect to myhttp.com. I can connect to the server and browse the website. So now show IP NAT translations. Notice we see NAT translations going to 8.8.8.200, being NATed to 10.11.100, and the source is 8.8.8.20. So this PC, with this IP address 88820 is able to connect to the internal web server. Let's open up an FTP, so FTP myftp.com. That connects successfully. And if we look at the NAT translations, notice this entry port 21, that's FTP. So the client is connecting to the FTP server. If I type DRR, we get a list of files on the FTP server. And if we look at the translations again, notice we now see this entry. Previously, we didn't have an entry from server 10.11.101. We only had 21. But here we have an additional entry for the passive FTP connection. So that works. I think we've successfully configured this network. Last step is to save the router configuration. We were able to get the internal hosts to connect to internet servers. We were able to get the outside host to connect to internal servers. We've used a combination of both static and dynamic NAT. So this is the configuration. This interface is the inside NAT interface. This interface is the outside NAT interface. This configuration is for static NAT to allow outside hosts to connect to these two servers. This is the dynamic NAT configuration pointing to an access list. So any internal hosts 
can connect to the internet. But notice for traffic to the servers, they use the static NAT translations. Static NAT takes precedence over dynamic NAT translations. So how did you do? Were you able to complete the lab? I hope you're enjoying these videos. If you are, please like them and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I want to wish you all the very best.